Whoa, what do we got here? My underwear. There we go. You, you haven't been wearing underwear in my house? Yeah. That's gross. <laughs> I'm not taking them off. I'm just putting my underwear on. Literally, you had hours to do this. <laughs> I've done this in the car before. It's quite. I feel like it would be easier to put talented. it on, you know, when you put your pants on. Now, I had to go commando this morning. I'm not gonna ask why. Uh, <laughs> today, uh, we are doing a movie review. Gross. Your hands are now have underwear on them. My hands have been around my genitalia. <laughs> That's always been the fear. Uh, we're doing a movie review of the uh, 2020 film, even though it just dropped on Netflix. So I don't know how to classify this. Is it, I don't, if it was in the festival circuit in 2020, but it dropped on an OTT platform in 2021, is it considered a 2021 film or a 2020 film? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but the, it's a Marathi film. It is a Marathi uh, film. Directed and written by... <clears throat> say his name for me, please. Uh, Chitanya... Tom Hain, I believe. And uh, produced by Alfonso Cuaron, right? Yeah, hold on, I gotta adjust some stuff over here. No. Who knew that wouldn't be a good idea? Yeah. Uh, and starring... There we go. Now I can breathe. I believe that's the main guy. Aditya Modak. Um, but yeah, it's a self-doubted uh, sacrifice in the struggle con convergent to an existential crisis for a devoted classical vocalist as the mastery he strives for remains elusive. That's actually a good... That is a good... That's, that's vague enough. Very... Yeah. Um, but it conveys what's going on. Uh, if you haven't watched it, it's on Netflix now. Uh, I, like I said, it came out last year. Like I said, I don't know how to classify this. Right. Because it wasn't anywhere last year. It wasn't in theaters. It wasn't... Right. But it, I believe it was Festival Circuit. Um, so I don't know how to classify it if it's a 2021 film or a 2020 film. IMDb listed as 2020, 2020. because I guess it, you know technically it had a theatrical release, but that was stunted obviously because of yeah. COVID. But so we've seen this director before in the Marathi film Court. Mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't watched that, go watch that review. Go watch that film. Great yep. film. Great film. Um, so uh, spoiler review. If you haven't watched it, just go watch it. Come yeah, we're just going to assume. You yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rick, yeah, your exactly. initial thoughts, please. Uh, so the very first thing I would say that's on my mind after seeing this without having framed a paragraph about it, mm -hmm. I have a sentence in my mind, which okay. would be this. I can't remember a time when I saw a film that screamed more loudly about important things by barely whispering. Oh, yeah. I could see that. Right? Definitely. And yeah. It, if you've seen Court, you can tell this director has a style. It's, it is the thumbprint. Uh, uh, he, he loves slow-paced. He does everything. Everything is extremely like, just methodical. The, the script is slow. I mean, everything about him is like, okay, so we're, the, the scripting, the storyline as far as the, what we talk about, the conversations will be pretty much, that'll move very slowly. The change of frames will be very slow. And like, one of my favorite moments, and you'll, um, the cinematography and the editing is so good that you'll miss it because is it the it, same guy as Court? It, I, it's, I'd be shocked if it wasn't. Michael something, and then let's check. Uh, it's a different one. Really? Yeah, it's a different. Okay, one. so they just work hand in glove, as it were. Yeah. Because one of the performances, it's I think it's the one because we're getting toward the end, and I was waiting to see if he was going to do it. It was an establishing shot at the back of the room, which is what he does all the time in court. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, the very opening of the film, I was like, yeah, is this the same room they did in court in? <laughs> right? But he's, he's got that establishing shot, and I knew what he was going to do. I said, this sucker is going to slow burn this, and I wonder how long it took them to do this shot. Because what we've got is probably, it's got to be an extended crane that's mm -hmm. just going at a snail pace. And we're going to go from this distant establishing to pretty much zoomed in right on, and that's exactly what he did. 
Yeah, uh, I thought he did a really, I, I, I did really enjoy the film. Just, if you enjoyed Court, I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy this That's film. a great way, yeah. If it's, you like Court, you'll like this. Because once again, I think that's what we said. There's not really anything wrong with the film. There isn't. It's, it's just, if it's not your style that, to, yeah. to do slow films, that might be your, your gripe. Uh, you know what? <laughs> this is a gripe, but it is a... I had to fight myself from falling asleep during some of the songs because they were so beautiful mm -hmm. and meditative and peaceful yeah. that as they kept going, I was like, yeah. and I closed my eyes just to listen. And then I was like, wait, I got to cut. And I would, I would venture to say at least a half hour to not 40 minutes of this is just music. Oh yeah. I love the background score of this because it's a choice for me for our dummies. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I put it on my list because of like best scores. Of how much we love doing classical music reactions. Yeah, I felt like I had a good appreciation, even though I'm not, I'm not saying I'm a master by any stretch of the imagination. Not too well, you're close, yeah. close to a master, very close, but uh, not a master yet. Yeah, um, but you're a master baiter. <laughs> kind of like this guy. Uh, <laughs> Well done. That was quick. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, no, the, um, the the score that it put behind it was so beautiful, I felt, because I, I just have an attachment to that sound of the... Mm, what oh, I, do, yeah. I forget the name of, of what it is. And I also got to feel like, since we've heard so many great classicals, like right when at the beginning, I was like, yeah, he's okay. Right. I could tell, like, even, I, I would imagine if I wasn't, hadn't seen anything, I was like... Oh yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah. But having heard, I'm like, oh, he's about, he's just about average. Yeah. He's we, kind of just an average singer. We had a frame of reference for this because of the blessing of the past two years of being exposed to so much beautiful uh, classical music and knowing the difference between the styles that are from the North and the South that we could have an appreciation for it we would have never had two years ago mm -hmm. or even a year ago. Yet... I think there's also a lot about this that we probably won't understand. In the same way that when I watch Black Swan, I can appreciate it because I have an understanding of dance mm -hmm. and I know what it requires in ballet, but there's a certain level of it that only a ballerina would understand. Yeah. And I think the same is true for this. Well, this one also, just like Court, I think his main thing is that he likes to tell, like, a, a me he likes messages. He has messages. And this is a message Important for ones. artists, yes. not just in classical music. This is just a, a story for artists. Yeah. Or actually anybody in general, in any job, I guess it would... I like, would agree. That's like where I was going to go as well. to say that you're so passionate about your craft, but you just don't have it. Like, yeah. you're, you're just... You're never going to get to the point of being amazing. Right. You're, you're probably, you'll probably know the craft probably just as well as anybody. You'll yeah. probably appreciate it. But you might just not have the talent, and it, it it showed not that not that he was bad, bad, especially by the no. end. He was he was good, but he wasn't special, it, and I, and that's one of the things it was showing. Like, do you keep following it regardless, right, right? Or do you give up? Yeah, there's a sign. I have two. These are linked. These stories. There's a school in the valley that on one of the buildings it says "Never give up on your dreams," and I I just it boggles my mind because. Yes, there are some dreams you really need to bury. Mm. And I, experientially, I remember as a little boy, I wanted, to be the, I wanted to be the first guy to ever have a World Series ring and an Academy Award. Mm. I wanted both of those things. And I was in serious pursuit of baseball when I was in my teens, because in the industry, you're not getting cast and stuff as a teenager unless you're a big star, because you're changing too fast. They'll hire an 18 to look younger way before they'll hire a 16-year-old. Yeah. So my agent and my dad, they all said, yeah, take a break if you want. And I kind of did take a break for a couple years and focused on baseball. I made varsity high school baseball. I was really good high school baseball. And then I played college baseball. But I remember two things that happened in baseball. One was standing in front of a guy who was going to be a first round draft pick pitcher who was throwing 95 plus. And I thought, I don't want to stand in front of that. And I thought if I was a major league baseball player, I'd want to be going up. And I did not want to stand in front of him. Even more, I went over the next year to uh, Pierce College where I was a music major as well after I changed from theater. And I tried out for the baseball team, a little late, and the guy said, if you have something to offer we don't already have, I'll let you be on the team. And I did, and at the end he came up to me and he said, you don't have anything to offer I don't already have. And I remember bicycling away, and it was the first time in my life I knew 
it's over. I'll never be a Major League Baseball player. There mm -hmm. was always that possibility, but it was over. But for me, that was really a... I was happy about that. Yeah, it was confirming to get that answer. It's, it's, it's such a conundrum. Uh, conundrum. That's what the word is. Right? Conundrum. Conundrum. Yeah, conundrum. conundrum. Um, of, of those things, because like Michael Jordan didn't get picked up on any of his high school basketball teams. Exactly. He didn't give it up on his dream. And thank on. God. Well, he I had to because my age. No, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, but no, that's one of those things. Just like you, you can hear both things and you're like, and I think the, the girl said it in the audio tapes. Uh, she was like, your father didn't have it, but he, he's, he's just kept going. Yeah. And you're smarter than that though, aren't you? Right. Aren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> but obviously he, he, he kind of just goes about his life and they shows multiple aspects of his life when he was younger and then obviously when he's older and a little more established probably a little more polished but still he's not not really doing anything and i thought one of the great scenes was actually uh later in the film when they meet that guy who knew about all these At other the tables artists, right we had it's a great i thought it was a scene phenomenal scene really important uh, scene. one well done whether directing and uh acting wise but he had a lot to say. Sure did. Because he was just going through all these people that this guy idolized. And just as a, as a young person, you idolize people. If you're an actor, you idolize certain people. Right. And, and it's like somebody coming and they, the people have been your idols for your entire existence of wanting to be whatever you're, you're wanting to be. Right. And this guy's just shutting you down. It's like, no, they're, they're really not all that. Right. They're, she never sang because she couldn't. <laughs> that's not that she did it because it was a mystical kind of a thing. It was that she didn't want an recording of her. It offended him, right? And why he would do it. And then so it's it's. I like the the message, and it doesn't give you a either a spoon feeding, and also doesn't specifically tell you in the end what is the right thing going on here. Exactly, and it the the larger question aside from the disappointments you can face and the recognition of your limits, irrespective of what your discipline may be. Uh, but hence disciple, because that's where that comes from, is living a life within a continued discipline. You're a disciple of the discipline. I, I liked even more so, and it's obviously applicable definitively with artists like this, but anything in life that you're pursuing as to why. Because the big thing for him was, especially this existential crisis, mm -hmm. wasn't just the recognition of his limitations. I think the deeper thing when he got challenged by that man was... Is everything I've been pursuing false? Is my why false? Mm -hmm. And for himself, am I pursuing this because I love this art form? Or is this because there's something in myself I'm trying to get affirmation in? My dad, I'm doing it because my dad wanted right, me to. Right, my dad wanted yeah, me so to. It's just what is expected of me. I actually, I only have one mini gripe. Mm -hmm. And it's just, a, it's just a choice I would make, and I'm not saying it's the better choice. It's just the choice I was anticipating and kind of wanted. Mm -hmm was when he was playing, I thought he was gonna give us the same end shot. As Court. As Court, mm -hmm. and that when he got up and walked out, I thought, fade to black. I yeah. thought that was it. Yeah, I did, I did though really, I loved every single shot on the motorcycle when it came up and that, that the, the rog was playing behind it and then she was speaking. And so it was his meditative state. Of, yeah driving along right of course I, I actually really enjoyed those all those scenes because there was a bunch of them. i did too and he stayed on them for a long time long, long uh, this time. guy does not care about your boredom uh, <laughs> which <laughs> i love no, I, neither know. does alfonso Cuaron, which is why yeah. they're very very similar uh, creators so I, I appreciate that and then also another thing is like that person he saw on on indian idol i assume is what it was that she came on and then she kind of just changed herself got got into not just classical at the beginning, but then turned into like big blockbuster kind of numbers. But she's made a name for herself. She's made a name for herself and I, she looks like she's enjoying herself. Yeah. And it's that question of, okay, at that point, do you become one of those people who is inwardly jealous of their success, but outwardly you poo poo them because yeah. they're not high level artistry, but yeah. deep down you're like, dang, I wish I was them. I wish I was doing what they were doing. Mm -hmm. and. I, I actually do like the final, after that fade out that I kind of wanted, mm -hmm. I did like the fact, I thought it was very intriguing to end it with them on that, it was a train or a bus they were on. It, I believe it was a train, I thought. Train. And this street musician comes on. Yeah. Playing. While he's sitting there. That was your last establishing shot. Yeah, it was. And I, I understand it because that is really, and I, I can't imagine what it's like 
in this particular discipline of artistry because there are certain disciplines that are having a higher level opera mm. and ballet yeah. and classical Indian music. Yeah, for sure. I would say are comparable, yeah. but there's another layer added to this that I don't find in opera and ballet, yeah. which is the aesthetic mm -hmm. and the sense of it being divine worship and being connected to the eternal. Yeah. There is a spiritual aspect to opera and to, to, to all of the arts, because they're, I can wax on a long time about that, but for this particular discipline, it's, uh, it all goes back to the why am I doing what I'm doing? And I yeah. thought the our lead actor, what's his name again? Forgive me for not remembering uh, off the top of my I head. Think it's, I think uh, it's Aditya Modak? I think so. We, I think Forgive he, me for not remembering I think he was name. actually just a singer. I know this is his first performance ever. Well, <laughs> right? So good job, him. Good job, director. Really, really good job. Uh, I think he hired him because he was a singer. And so obviously you... You kind of have to. You for this kind of role, oh you goodness. have to like hire a singer. Like if you're doing a skating movie, you can't hire an actor who doesn't skate. No, uh, <laughs> you like can, but it's gonna not be realistic. Yeah. So you kind of have to get somebody that's in that world. Yeah. Um, and he did a, a phenomenal job, job directing, and this guy acting, uh, being at his first performance. Uh, I thought it was really the cinematography was really like we said. The score was was wonderful and haunting at times. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's it's one of those things. It's I uh, some of the American Idol was a little cheesy, uh, but I think that was probably on purpose. Mm -hmm. Like that was stylized to be like this really cheesy, quirky. Yeah. Um, not like they're they're all faking it. All the judges are Simon Simon Cowell. All yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. All those people. That's really the only thing. But I'm pretty sure that was on purpose as well. I do so. too. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it was. And I love that he really didn't give you as an audience member. A clear answer. A clear answer. He allowed you. <laughs> I, I think anybody who sees this and has a particular frame of reference can walk away feeling their frame of reference is that's somehow right. enforced. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, because that's, I think, what good films do. They, they leave open to questions and dialogue. They do, I, I, I hate when films spoon feed you what they're trying to tell you. Right. Know? As opposed to leaving it up to the audience. And you could still get that to the point that you're wanting to tell, but you didn't have to spoon feed me. Right. I think it's a much more satisfying watching experience for the audience. It is. And you do see the growth in him. And again, this is where I mentioned at the very beginning of the review, how it says so many things that are profound and it screams them through a whisper. Yeah. Absolutely. So the way he tells us that this guy has changed in this journey, he does it in a really really simple way we've seen all these shots of him on his scooter listening to the woman in his ears and then all what we get is this yep and that's the way he lets us know a profound change just happened in this man yep and that's what you get throughout the film yeah just you, if you're not if you fall asleep listening to the beautiful meditative music you'll you'll miss uh and i'm sure there's a lot of stuff we miss because it's so small and, and so subtle, subtle. Yeah. it's like looking at a it's like looking at a bunch of leaves that are falling. You can only catch a few of them at one time. I bet there's probably a bunch of things. Absolutely. And a rewatch, you might you might catch again. And I love this director. I can't wait to watch more of his his work. I feel like he's definitely not. I mean, with Court and now this, he's just. I don't know. I don't know if those were actually four years apart, and he does one film every four years. But I would believe it. Uh, no, look, uh, disciple. Thanks, consulting producer. Short. It looks like he did a short yeah. film. Yeah. So those, those two. Well, he has two qualities that make for great directors. And that was his directorial debut. Court. Yeah, Court. He has. <laughs> he has. It's. I understand why Alfonso Cuarón was interested in him because the two qualities he has about that all great directors have, among other qualities, first of all, is you can you can see their DNA and what they've made. It's their film, and you know, ah, this is their film. And the other thing that's connected to that. They don't give a damn. Mm -mm. They're going to tell the story they want to tell, and however it comes out is however it comes out. Like Tarantino, I think there's actually a line in this about that. Is there? I, I think he was. It was something about there's a hundred people in the audience. Are you going to try to please every single one of them, or are they yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like yes, are yes. they coming to see you? Right, exactly. Or are you trying you, to please them? Are you trying to? Are you doing it because you need to please the audience? Yeah. Or are you doing it because of your own? And th that's my Tarantino mm -hmm. quote. Yeah. He, he was asked about his process. He was at a round table and he, he said, my process is this. I, I, I write first and I just write my story. And then when it's done, 
I, I have to love that so much that it could be done as it is. Mm. And I could go to sleep and for the rest of my life, I would just know people could read that and I'd be happy with it. Mm. Those are the ones I make my movies. Mm. Where I'm completely sad, I don't, he doesn't feel this, I've gotta do it that way. His process is, I've gotten the writing out the way I want it written and I'm not thinking about the movie when I'm writing. Mm -hmm. I have a story I wanna tell. And then once that's done, I'm gonna make that a movie. Yep. Yeah. That's why he's a great director. So, great film. Let us know what you thought about this film uh, down below. And let us know what the next Marathi film. Uh, Marathi, uh, I think we said the other day, Marathi, Bengali, and Malayalam are three very consistent uh, in terms of artistic. As was Assam, even though we've only seen yeah, two. Yeah, we've only seen uh, three. Uh, Why do I do that all the time? Why do I forget the third was, one all the time? Well, uh, Assam was as, 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 the cannibal. Yeah. And then two from... Us. Village Rock Stars and Yeah, Bill and we love sorry. I don't know why I'm forgetting anyway. it's always three. But oh, we've seen great ones from all of them. I'm not saying those are the no. better ones. I'm just saying artist like in well, terms we've had of a consistent film scene. festival style right. films, those three uh give it to me all the time. Yeah. So let us know what the next Marathi film that we should watch is down below.